recording this around midday and I've just turned off the fan. It was 40 degrees at 12 o'clock, it's now 3. I only have a bit of time before I melt in this room. So let me just bang out what I've listened to this month, which is the month of March 2022. Thank you for watching. I started this month with Acts of God by Immolation, which is a great, intricate, brutal return for a pretty good death metal band. This is one of the first projects of theirs that I actually really like. After that, I listened to Charlotte Adigiri and Bolas Pupul's Tropical Dancer, which I really liked, but I didn't really connect with it because I need a translation for this to truly get immersed in the themes of this album that I've heard are really important to the music that's being said. After that, I listened to Impera by Ghost. I think the term I want to use with this is Broadway metal. I don't know, man. I, I like Ghost when they mix metal and hard rock, but this is them going completely into hard rock and completely abandoning what made them so intriguing in the first place. After that, I listened to 7220 by Lil Durk, and it's the exact same Lil Durk album, except now it ends with a mad southern racist at the end of the track list. After that, I listened to Who Cares by Rex Orange County. You can read that album title again, and you'll find my opinion on this. After that, I listened to Crash by Charlie XCX, which, honestly, I'm way more excited with the fact that she's now completely independent. However, the singles of this album, I will carry forward with me. Those were really good. I also listened to Motomami by Rosalia, but the thing with Rosalia is that I think she needs more focus. The next project has the potential to blow me away if it just stays in its lane a bit more and gets a bit more focused, because I really loved some of the tracks on this. You will definitely see them at the year-end list. I then listened to the new Destroyer project. However, I listened to that a day ago, and I don't think I have a full opinion on it yet, so I won't comment on it. However, it does intrigue me to go back and listen to Kaput, because Sophist Pop, that's kind of my thing. After that, we have some of the great albums I listened to this month. Obviously, it comes from Griselda, man. God, Griselda was on point this month. It obviously started with God Don't Make Mistakes, Conway the Machine, one of the most consistent in the game. He continues to deliver. And after that, Benny the Butcher, Tana Talk 4. What an album, man. Both of these are great albums that I'm gonna carry some of the best rap albums of the year so far. And Johnny P's Caddy. If anything, just listen to Johnny P's Caddy. And this is coming from someone who doesn't vibe with J. Cole as much as others do. However, my favorite album of the entire month from release standpoint had to be Once Twice Melody by Beach House. I know this is Feb, but goddamn if this doesn't make me want to go and do an entire Beach House deep dive for the next month. Because wow, this was amazing. Uh... 1 hour 20 minutes of some of the most perfect dream pop you can get. It's amazing. And then we end on this. <laughs> Honestly, I don't have anything to say about this Machine Gun Kelly album. Other than the fact that just go watch Brad Taste of Music. Complete evisceration of this album. And sure, Denzel Curry as well. Great album. Again, don't have a lot of thoughts on it. Listen to it pretty recently. I'll see if I come up with some better thoughts because this will definitely end up in the year-end list. Let's go to the underrated section of the month. I'm gonna start with, hey, did you like that Lingua Ignora project last year of Cine Be Ready? Well, then you'd like this, uh, Tongues by Tanya Tagak. It's filled with some really cool vocal passages, some of the best vocals I've heard this year. After that, did you like the new Black Country New Road album, Ants From Up There, one of the best albums of the year? Well then listen to Caroline, the self-titled EP from Caroline. I think it's some really cool art rock, some really cool soundscapes that are formed in this. I think you'd really enjoy it. After that, we have my boy, RxK Nephew's back. Of course, Midas needs restoration's good. It's so good. Like, it, it bears repeating that this guy is going to be a star. Just his... His charisma is something that cannot be matched by many. After that, we have 365 by Bloods Boy and Quit Life. This is like a mix between cloud rap and alternative R&B. Really like where this goes, man. It's such a cool project. Also, this album art is insane. After that, I have Canopsia by Quanic. 
And yeah, Quanic is gonna be Quanic is gonna be another one of those emo shoegaze bands that I'm going to be so deep into that I'm never gonna get out of that rabbit hole. You have been added to the whole Asian glow paranul Sunhostaman Conta group of bands that I will very consistently be happy to see do well in the industry. After that, I have Classic Objects by Jenna Wall. It's a very calming project and it's a really cool art pop sort of foray. It's pretty cool. I recommend checking it out. After that, we have Empty Hiding World by Windows 96 and Gavriel. If you want to hear what a Windows 96 would sound like, listen to this album. Because, yeah, it, it's exactly how I would picture a Windows 96 to sound. And finally, I have Close by Mesa. This is one of the most perfect mixes of doom metal, traditional doom metal, and things like vocals. They've been mixed together so well. And I love the vocals on this album. One of the best vocal performances of the entire year so far. And it just, it's so brilliant. I, if you have any sort of love for doom metal as a genre, then I'd highly recommend checking this out because it takes that doom metal and puts such a spin on it and does it in a really cool way. Now let's move to the classics. I started this year's classics with either or by Elliot Smith going more into that Elliot Smith deep dive. And yeah, things like Angelis, Cupid Strick, Pictures of Me, this is my favorite Elliot Smith project so far. Really looking forward to EXO next month. After that, I listened to Baduism by Erika Badu. Erika is at the center of this. And sure, do I care for the skits? No. But do I think this is one of the best Neo Soul projects of all time? Definitely. The groove on this is unmistakable. It is so good. After that, complete opposite, I listened to V. Halmstad by Shining, one of the most controversial black metal albums of all time. And I know that depressive black metal gets kind of a meme reputation in the whole metal scene, but this is one of the best examples of it. It is so loud and expressive in a way that not a lot of metal is anymore. And it captures it in such a haunting way. I really love this project. After that, I listened to Somewhere City by Origami Angel. I liked Gami Gang last year, but this was the album I heard about. And this was amazing. I love Midwest Emo, and this is a perfect Midwest Emo project. Which also can be said about American Football by American Football. Yes, this was my first time listening to this, and amazing. I, I would kill someone for that guitar tone. That is impressively good. Uh, also, Never Meant. I've been listening to Never Meant for every day since I heard this project, mid of this month. Really cool stuff. After that, I listened to Worry by Jeff Ross on Stock, purely to remind me just what good pop punk is. And yeah, I love this album. This is fun, depressing, everything at once. I love this project a lot. After that, I listened to the Twin Peaks soundtrack. Yeah, complete switch and flow. Julie is the star of this show, by the way. Sure, the soundscapes are brilliant, they're beautiful, they are unexplainable in certain ways. And I think I need to get to the actual show to realize how good some of these things are. But Julie really makes this into one of the most elite soundtracks of all time. I also listen to Kind of Blue by Miles Davis. And do I think it's a top 100 album of all time? No, I think I've even heard some better jazz albums. But this is undoubtedly one of the coolest things I've heard. It's just so smooth in its entire soundscapes and everything. And finally, I listened to Purple Rain. Yeah, this was my first Prince album. I've obviously heard, you know, When Doves Cry and of course Purple Rain. But this was my first true album. And I didn't like the first song, I'll be honest. I thought it was good, great at some points. It's just... It was kind of underwhelming, but then after that, it just picks up and you're just like, wow. Yeah, this is amazing. Uh, Purple Rain. Purple Rain is perfect, right? It, it just is one of the most perfect songs ever made. And what a way to end a month like this. 
and we're done. I am surprised I haven't melted. I need to check the temperature of this purely to see if I haven't been duped. But anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace.